we arrest every atmospheric pressure from hell Mavakato fele hiva tasta nevetes. Volokamba ha vesteshne. Volokara pa sefrom adas. We are arrested. We arrest the influence of darkness against the rising of women. Mavata poro komo fele talibata. Brompa la tevelo koforo batisas. Lumbo la kavanda brante le efectos gele. Rama bashke fele kino falatayas. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you lift your hands to him? Just bless his name. Thank you, Lord. Just bless his name. Thank you, Lord. Just bless his name. 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 Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be His holy name. Hashem, Hadonai Elohim, Brasoferu Haprekevirus Soprana, Le Coprasimalihis, Baruch Hashem, Adonai Elohim, Ravekoskepa. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Mavrostopani, Velikoste Mehesh, Baruch Bashem. Adohai Elohim Baroske Fratome Velites Ale Resombreges Gete Rasombreke Folo Paramasas Father, your name is exalted. Your name is praised even now and forevermore. Thank you. I have never seen your kind. I'm devoted to your purpose and forever. You are good. You are kind. I have never seen. I'm devoted. Jesus, as you take your seats, give the Lord a shout of praise. I know you are women, but please give the Lord a shout of praise. manifestation of womanhood is one of the things that always attracts the devil. In the Garden of Eden, the moment Eve appeared, Genesis chapter 3, the Bible said the devil was also found in that garden. Up until now, Satan has no business with Adam till Eve comes on the scene. Then the devil shows up to cause commotion. So when man now fell short of the glory of God, 
the woman was put into a subservient role. And that role now created different schools of thought that has brought us to this place where we have a negative narrative for females. In the days of Jesus, Jesus restored the original intention of women to the body of Christ. And interestingly, I just want to put something in perspective concerning the mantle of Deborah. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2 verse 1, they were all gathered with one accord in one place. And the whole room they were in was filled. Uh, God filled the room first before he filled the people. That means that contrary to what we think about how the baptism of the Holy Ghost looked like on the day of Pentecost, God was not pouring into them. God was enclothing them with power. So they were wearing power. The, the room they were in was filled. They were wearing power. Power came on them like a garment. So the day of Pentecost was actually a mantling service. It was a mantling service. Now follow what I'm saying very well. It will help you in understanding what we are about to enter into. It was a mantling service. Yet this same Holy Spirit that came upon them, Jesus said that you tarry in Jerusalem till you are endued with power. Luke 22. And it says they were supposed to tarry till power comes upon them so they can be witnesses. That means that they couldn't be proper witness without the Holy Ghost. They needed the mantling of the Spirit to properly represent Jesus Christ in every nation, every culture with the super intelligence of the Holy Spirit to be able to minister properly to every kind of uh, facet of life. But in the Bible, there is a certain anointing called the spirit of Elijah. It's amazing that terminology. What that terminology simply implies is that that spirit, the Bible says in Malachi chapter 4, shall come and shall join the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children to the fathers. Then the Bible also said in the book of Luke chapter 1, chapter 2, concerning the birth of John the Baptist, the Bible says he shall come in the power and spirit of Elias. What that meant was that the Holy Ghost had come to a transactionary dimension, to the fullness of oppression in a man called Elijah. The complete oppression of the Holy Ghost in a man guaranteed that the Holy Ghost was comfortable with the temperament of Elijah so that that temperament can fall on a person instead of the Holy Ghost. So now a man can wear Elijah because Elijah exhausted the full scope of how the spirit can possess a man. So he said he came in the mantle and spirit of Elijah. So when we talk about the mantle of Deborah, there's a full scope of the picture the Lord wants to paint for us concerning Deborah. There were only two judges in the Bible who were called prophets, Samuel and Deborah. But follow me here. Follow me here. When Deborah was introduced in the Bible, amazing how God intentionally wrote her name. In Judges of the 4, 4 down to 6, it says that there was this judge, a woman called Deborah. She was a prophetess, the wife of Lepidoth. They mention her husband's name, and never tell us who the husband was. Now, we don't have no narration about Lepidoth. It means God deliberately put that title there, the wife of Lepidoth, to tell you that, you see, contrary to New Age feminism, there is divine feminism that can make you prophetess, wife, business owner, and judge at the same time. <laughs> Deborah posed that picture. You can have all at the same time. Because Depidov was not described, so there was no point putting that description there. The wife of Lepidov and a judge over Israel. But let's take us on this journey. When Satan heard that a woman was coming, he had a problem. Because Genesis 2, 7 says, The Lord God formed Adam from the dust of the earth, Yatsha. He formed Adam from clay. 
But in Genesis chapter 2, 22, 23, the Bible says, the Lord God made, and the word in the Hebrew is bana. Bana means the woman was not formed, she was built. So men were formed, women were built. I said, men were formed, women were built. So contrary to what we interpret scripture to be in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, the woman is not weak in her vestige, but she is complex in her build up. So the word weaker vessels is not feeble in strength. It is complexity in nature. So you have to dwell with them with knowledge, not spiritual knowledge, scientific knowledge. Now, what is this about a woman that always creates the devil's heart attack? The woman came on the scene and Satan was concerned. You know why? Genesis 1, 26 to 27, he said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Let them have dominion. Let them replenish the earth. Spoke. Then the Bible says, verse 27, 28, and the Lord God made man in his image, male and female. Now, if you read that sentence, he said, the Lord God made Adam in his image, semicolon, male and female. It means the image of God is male and female. The image of God is not male and female. So the moment Eve appeared in the garden, the image of God was complete. That's why Satan came on the scene. As long as Adam is alone, he is not yet the image of God. I come against the spirit of cognitive dissonance. Every prior knowledge that is roaming in your head, preventing you from receiving the word of God, I arrest it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So this is woman who has appeared. The, com the completion of the image of God. But some way, somehow, man lost the garden. And when man lost the garden, the devil decided to change the revelation of who a woman is. Because you see, if I can belittle the one who will carry the deliverer, if I can belittle the one who from her womb will come that which shall bruise the head of the serpent, then I have an advantage to actually buy extra time. Satan has no power save time. Because he knows his time is short. Matthew chapter 8, 26 downwards, when the evil spirit spoke to the Lord, have thou come to cast us out before our time. So the power of Satan is not to stop you from achieving your destiny, it's to delay your achievement. Because he understands you have but 70, 80, and 90. But the purposes of God are eternal, yet he needs time to manifest. So though in eternity the purposes and the callings of God will be waiting for you, you didn't have enough time to manifest them. So anytime you are spending time with sin, the chapters of your life are reducing. Because all the time you should have been building capacity, you were wasting on the world. So by the time you are ready to walk with God, you have but few chapters of fulfillment. But today we pray in the name of Jesus, by the enterprise of the spirit of time and seasons, your seasons and your times will be restored fully in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, this is it. There is a very popular curse that is spoken in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. And sometimes the English created a hurried interpretation. It says, you will have sorrow in your labor. You say, your sorrow shall be multiplied. Then he says, and you desire shall be for your husband but he shall subdue you now even if you read it in the english the interjection should tell you what you are thinking is not what was said about your desire will be for your husband so we've preached it as though god cares the women to like men the rest of their lives no the moment he uses the interjection, but he will rule over you, means that he is not talking of affection. 
Simpler, similar example, Genesis chapter 4, the verse 7, after Cain had sinned, the Bible says that, Why art thou wrought, O Cain? If thou doest well, shall not ye be received? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at your door. His desire is for you, but ye shall rule over it. Same phrase. Sin's desire is for you, but you will rule over it. Your desire will be for the man, but the man will rule over you. So let's go to the sin part. It's easy there. Sin is looking for man to dominate him. Then it means that the curse was this. The woman wants to dominate a man. That's why I said, but he will rather dominate you. So it is the curse that gives an insatiable appetite to try to dominate a man. Because we are going contrary to the pattern of the image and the likeness of God. Why am I saying what I'm saying? When Deborah showed up in, Genesis, in, G, in Judges chapter 4, the Bible said that she knew by the word of knowledge that a man was supposed to win the battle. He said the word of the Lord came to Deborah and she sent for Barak that are you not supposed to go to battle with 10,000 of Zebulon and Naphtali? And Barak said you are right. You have spoken well. Now if Deborah was operating under the cares, she would sideline Barak and take over the siege. But Deborah understood patterns and administration in the spirit that this battle is not for me, but my role is to assist and direct us to the right place. Hallelujah. Are we here together? We need this. We need this. Her role is to direct and to secure the patterns of God upon the face of the earth. So Deborah now calls the man who is supposed to fight this battle. Doesn't insult him and belittle his confidence. Feminism is not emasculation. To be feminine is not to reduce who men are. You, you cannot reduce a gender to intensify yours. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the moment Deborah came into contact with Barak and spoke these words, Barak now made a statement, I want to go to this battle with you. But there's another thing Deborah now exhibits. She says, we will go together. The Lord will give us victory from verse 7. But I tell you something, another woman will take your honor. It means that Deborah was not power crazy. She was will of God oriented not power crazy. This mantle is not to make you thirsty for power. It is to make you aligned to the will of God. To the point where you understand spiritual collaboration. That it does not matter who takes the glory. Because in Judges chapter 5, this same Deborah who actually masterminded through prophecy, through counsel, and through spiritual and physical battle intelligence said, let us sing the song of Shanga." And the song of Jael. Jael, actually, can I say this? Can I say this? The mantle of Deborah is to elevate unsung heroes. The mantle of Deborah is not for your shine. It's to lift up unsung heroes. People who have been belittled. People who have not been noticed. People who have just a phrase in their life. That mantle is to lift them up into their purpose, into their shine, and into their glory. What did Jael do? It was Deborah's strategy that made that um, army general Sisera ran into her tent. So literally, it was like a sleeping duck. He came to the room and the Bible said he was tired. So he started sleeping, snoring. So there was no battle. She just took a nail and sent it through her, his temple. And Bible said in Judges chapter 5, they sang the song of Jael. When the mantle comes on you, you are not looking for fame. You are looking for glory. You are looking for glory. God is breaking in our generation. Flames for fame. Flames for fame. I said flames for fame. 
we will stop inviting famous people and we'll start inviting flaming people flaming people praise the lord this mantle is a very powerful mantle because it has to subdue satan's poison of trying to dominate a man because she has the opportunity to do so barak is at her beck and call Bible says they tell them that Sisera has climbed the mountain and Bible said Deborah tells Barak go up and pursue so she's just around him see and telling the man seeing and telling what he ought to do not trying to take the battle over can I say this we joke in our African parlance if the man is the head and the woman is the neck the pilot of the head is the neck if the man is the head and the next says, won't turn there. Your power is not in being seen. It is in being influential. <laughs> because sometimes you can be seen, but there's no power. Oh, somebody get what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Today we are going to pray and allow God to envelop us with this mantle. Because this mantle is so necessary. It's not just about an external flow. We quickly ran over the story of Elisha. Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit, not your mantle. That means that if I get your garment, I can lose it after three services because it's impartation. But when I get your spirit after the impartation and after the service, in the season of dryness, that spirit that can cook anointing again, I've carried it. This is what mantles are. Mantles are not anointings. Mantles are offices plus anointings interjected with spirit. That's what mantling is. So you receive the anointing, you receive the assignment, and there's a spirit that gives you a temperament to handle the operation. That's what we call mantle. So when we say the mantle of Deborah, is a temperament that can hold the power and can hold the assignment intact. And when you meet 10,000 troops, you are a woman, but you are moving with mighty warriors. And you can climb mountains with Barak and scar and scope through and say, look at him, go down there. And she joins Barak. She doesn't give prophecy under the tree. She joins in the military formation. She ensures that her prophecy comes to pass. May the mantle to secure your prophecy. May the mantle to observe the steps by which you declared come to pass come upon you in the name of Jesus we are living the days where we suggest a solution and sit back and see men mess it up but we are entering the day of mantling you suggest the solution and you are like Deborah you are in the courtroom you suggest the solution and you are in parliament you are observing did they hear what I said last week uh, you, are, you suggest the solution and you are at the district level and you are together with them doing the immunization. You are there also seeing how they'll do the chips compound. And you are there because I didn't just give a prophetic word. I showed up on site to make sure when the devil rises up, nobody will come and tell us, sorry, sir. Sorry, madam. We couldn't complete it. Imagine Barak going alone. Sisera won't die. Because in Barak's mind, Sisera is running away. But Deborah said, no, go up, follow him, pursue him. And it was in the pursuit, in the confusion of the pursuit, he found the house of Jael. And that's where death was coming. May the Lord give us collaborative and enterprise. An enterprise that doesn't, you see, they didn't even know who Jael was. Because Bible says her husband, Heber, had left the family tree of the Israelites. So it means that he has married somebody and they are not even aware of this girl. But by the spirit and the anointing of Deborah, there is unseen collaboration. There is unseen dynamic motion. So whilst you are doing your part, God is motioning Jaya with a hammer and a, and, and a nail. So I did my part to make sure we corner the enemy so that Jaya will carry out the final blow. But when we are done, one of the things I've noticed about the moves of God in our generation is people want to fight for copyright. The Holy Ghost is the copyright. And can I say this to you? 
when you go online, you'll be surprised that thing God is teaching your house, he's telling someone else. Well, the time God spoke, he spoke to every child who was ready to listen. So we heard in real time. We all heard in real time. So when that mantle comes on us, Jael takes the praise and we actually sing the song. We like to be hidden. But our hiding is not obscurity. Our hiding is, you don't know what I am capable of. Because I've not shown you all my claws. But in the day of battle, depending on what I ought to be, I, I will either be a lion or an eagle. So you cannot tell. Because it said, the wind bloweth wherever it listed. So are they that are born of the spirit. We cannot see it, but we can tell. We can feel an influence. I pray for the influence of Deborah. People cannot tell. You are meek as a dove. But when the anointing comes on you, you are like David. And you have Tourette's. You begin to react to the giant. I remember the last time. The Bible says Samson had told his family members who came to beg him. Now please, you are causing you are causing unrest for us. We want to submit you to the Philistines in Judges chapter 15. And Samson said, if, if I allow you to tie me, will you kill me? He said, no, no, I won't kill you. We just want to give you to the Philistines. So they release us from our tribute and our pain. Samson agreed. And the Bible says in verse 13, Samson got to a valley and saw the Philistines on top of the mountain. Now he had agreed to be tied. But the moment he saw the Philistines, the anointing, which does not require previous contemplation, came as a sporadic spasm. So the Bible says he didn't plan to do it. But by the time he looked at his hand, the rope was smoking out. The anointing was burning the fiber and it tore. That means that, can I announce to you, when the mantle of Deborah comes, you might go back to the kitchen, you might go back to menial job, but the moment Barak needs your help, you will switch all of a sudden and your eyes will open and you'll begin to speak what God asked you to speak in that season. So this mantle is not a mantle where every morning you wake up, you are feeling anointed. No, it's a mantle that will only come alive when it is required. It's like Superman. He is wearing suit as Clark Kent. But the moment there is trouble, there's a reaction. May God give you that spontaneous reaction. Hallelujah. And something is coming upon us. Women, something is coming upon us. The Holy Ghost is both male and female. That means that if you say God's image is male and female, and you say a female is weak, then you are saying there's a weak side to God. No, God is not weak. You are going to enter your place. You enter your calling. And no more limitations, no more barriers. You don't care the status quo. You don't, dis you don't care the description. Sometimes they can tell you as a woman, pray gently. No. Pray by the Holy Ghost. I said, pray by the Holy Ghost. I said, pray by the Holy Ghost. As a woman, you can't be an apostle. No. They are wrong teachings. In First Timothy chapter 2, something had entered the church. Timothy was a pastor in a city called Ephesus. And the goddess there was called Diana of Artemis. And this Diana had propounded the theory that a woman's eyes was open before a man. So women were more enlightened before men. And she herself had children. So Diana had daughters in her temple who she said she didn't need a man to birth. So there was the beginning of feminism in that ancient time. And when Paul appeared, he says, suffer not the women to teach. He was not talking of preaching the gospel. To teach such things. That's why he added from verse 6 onwards. For the woman was made for the man. And it was the woman who was deceived, not the man. So he was speaking in opposition. To clear the wrong teachings, he said, they should stop women from teaching such doctrines. So it was not women from preaching. Because even Paul said it in Romans 16, I greet Andronicus and Junior, who are chief among the apostles, and they are my kinsmen. So Paul's cousins, Andronicus, the boy, Junior was a girl. He said they are chief amongst apostles. It means they became apostles before Paul. And she was a woman. So before we say women should not preach, go back to the scriptures. Go back to the scriptures. Malakafumayasana. Tonight, this afternoon, sorry. I always say tonight. Men of God preach in the night a lot, so. <laughs> Amen. This afternoon, I want a Holy Ghost. A Holy Ghost dimension. 
that came upon Mary to come upon you. They told Mary what women could not experience in a day. That you will be with child. He said, I don't know a man. He said, I'm not telling you to know a man for what God wants to do. That means the mantle of Deborah, what God has come to bring you, you will not need men, you will help men. That narrative where men have to help women. No, Deborah, it is men who need women as help. Because when they enter the mantle, they become the proper helpmeet. And you will guide by the Spirit. You will guide by the Holy Ghost. You will guide by the power of Christ that is alive in you. Today, we have not come to a meeting. We have come to a formation. We have come to battle array. We have come to an encounter. And the encounter means after you are done, something about you must be broken enough you can't find it. If you encounter, Jacob encountered God the first time and he left the same. That's why he said God was here and I knew it not. And for 20 years, he suffered the consequences of missed encounter. May you not miss this encounter. I said, may you not miss this encounter. For everything that will happen this morning, may you not miss this encounter. Because God is about to set you on a journey. You will be sitting under your palm tree between Ramah and Bethel on the mount of Ephraim. And people will come to you with their problems. But you see, your mantle is not for solving domestic problems. So as soon as God said, call Barak, she leaves the people who have issues and joins the man. Do you know for almost three weeks, Deborah was not opposed? The people's problems were in their stomach because there were higher matters to this one. When the mantle comes on you, you will notice that you shouldn't make the domestic the demonic. Your husband is not a deep. Oh. The domestic problem is not a demonic issue. <laughs> You must learn how to leave that one and enter the realm of government and begin to walk with the kings and say, son, that one must go down. That one must fall down. Why are you in that office? Not because you are pretty. They use pretty to bring you there, but you must use anointing to, to, to change something. It was pretty that brought Esther into palace. It was fasting and prayer that gave her extraordinary favor so that she decided when to meet the king. The law was the king decides when to meet you. But by fasting and prayer, he changed the law. Do you know the woman had enough influence? She captured the king for three consecutive days. I need you tomorrow too. I need you the day after. I'm not done with what I'm doing. I need you again. Mantles. Mantles. Yes, you were pretty and they gave you the opportunity. But be smart enough to enter prayer and fast. Because that's what will change the gears. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I gave, a prof, I gave a vision I saw to the team, and I think I want to share it here. Because we're Ghanaians. I want to share it here. Now, I was praying the spirit, and I saw a woman who looked like Yas Antoine standing in this auditorium. And when I saw this spirit, I asked God, why? Why this spirit? And the Lord now took me up in the spirit and said, in the 17th and 16th century, the mantle of Deborah had been released to Africa. That is why the Dahomey tribe of Benin City had the women warrior. And it seems as if along the coast of West Africa, there were various similar stories of women warriors that arose to fight the British Empire. Not men, women. And in Ghana, we had the Hasantua of the Jesu people fighting the Jintres alongside Osei Tutu against the British and all those and the Portuguese and all that. But the point was this. When I saw it, God said to me, I sent it in the spirit. But they did not understand it. So they added witchcraft and charm to it. So it became the dark force that influences women when they are not spiritual. From rising up into being bossy and deciding that nobody will ever take me for granted. Then it becomes evil. So the spirit is intact, but it has been influenced. It's been influenced. And as I looked at the vision, I saw an angel descend. And I said, Lord, why this personality? And the Lord said, it's already here. We are having this conference to polish it. That means you are coming to have women who will rise up in government. And nothing about power will influence them. They are still like Deborah. 
they'll rise up in power and know witchcraft will begin to make them domineering. They'll rise up in glory and they'll not become proud because Deborah is not just prophetess, she is also wife. And in spite of her being a wife, she is also a judge. And none of the activities conflict against each other. That's what I saw. So if you felt heavy in this place, that spirit is what rules any woman who tries to rise in Ghana without the Holy Ghost. A spirit attaches to you. It's a spirit of domineering. So it's as if the woman in rising up to power is behaving like a man. Because men have side chicks, she too will start having side boys. Because it, it's a spirit and it's witchcraft oriented. Oba will break that spirit. Thank God we are not concocting a vision. God said, that's what I'm doing. He started polishing this woman. So she was like a black entity. But as he started cleaning it, she became a beautiful jewel, shining in all the majesty. And God said, I will use this to restore the force of glory, the industriousness. You see, there is a spirit of industriousness in Ghana. The non-formal economy is mainly focused on the Mokola woman. It is the woman who is doing petty trade that is enhancing economy. But there's a spirit. In the 90s, there was something called the Mokola women, and they had intermeddled with evil spirits. I will break it today. I said, we'll break it today. I said, we'll break it today. And any force that silences women, so that when you are rising up, you are being careful not to offend men. God will silence that force in the name of Jesus. You will rise with ease. You rise with ease. Because Barak needs women. Barak needs a woman. It takes a woman to change a man's haircut. Samson. From dreadlocks to me. I, I, I trust my Baba. You know I trust my Baba. The Lord has shaved him. Bowed head. One woman. Changed his haircut. So today we'll pray. I just wanted, I mean, the apostle and the team, powerful teachings on these things. But I just wanted to bring you a perspective that is the devil created a spirit where the moment you enter power or a position of influence, the desire wants to dominate people and control. So sometimes you don't even understand. Somebody genuinely has to go, but you are hurt without reason. It's a spirit. It has to be dealt with. So become mothers in Israel that will raise children after the ways of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See the Lord who's seated up above, high above the heavens and the earth. He's seated in glory and is clothed in light. See the Lord who's seated high above. High above the heavens and the earth is seated in glory and is clothed in light. Some two. See the Lord laughing high. Hallelujah. See the Lord. See the Lord. Can you see the Lord? See the Lord. Hallelujah. See the Lord. See the Lord. See the Lord. See the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he knows their day is coming. Can you see the Lord? He's laughing. Hallelujah. See the Lord. See the Lord. See the Lord. Laughing.
said, Has thou known where the hill is stored for the day of battle? And Deborah and Barak in Judges chapter 5 said, Let us sing a song. So the entire chapter is a song describing how they won the battle. And in verse 18, he says, Zebulon and Naphtali were men that jopaded their lives unto the high places of Israel. They took no gain for money when they fought the king of Canaan in Tanakh. I by the waters of Megiddo, but they fought from heaven. All the stars in their courses against Sisera. So Bible says in Judges 4, when Sisera lifted the sword, the sword was magnetized to the ground. What it meant was that angels were the stars and they stood in heaven together with men on earth. And when they joined forces with men on earth, they activated the elements. The sun, the moon, the star. He said, the sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. So the sun is a weapon. The moon is a weapon. He said, they, they began to manipulate. They entered the earth and manipulated silicon. They manipulated crystals and began to magnetize the earth. So that when Cicero leaves the sword, Bible says his hand fell. Because the earth pulled the sword to the ground. They fought from heaven. There is a battle you must fight from heaven. But in Christ, we have that battle strategy. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but mighty. Not in God, not by God, but through God. That means that when I wear and hold the weapon of God, I enter God and I begin to wield the sword. That kind of battle, one will put to flight a thousand and two, ten thousand. Listen to me. One of the greatest things God gave women is warfare. In fact, time will fail us to get there. But Eve was actually the warrior. That's why when the warrior appeared, war began. The one who had the weapons attracted the devil. <laughs> so you are a warrior by birth. You are a warrior in life. Everything you go through as a woman is war. It's war. Before you marry, you're against the odds. Six to one. So for every man, there are six other ladies on your side. So when you find a husband, it's even war. It's war. It's war to marry. It's war to give birth. Because when you are delivering a child, you are in between life and death. Because for life to enter, death must operate. So it's as if your life forces reduce. They need to put you on oxygen. Because it's as if you are dying. It's as if you are sleeping because life is coming out of you. The womb woman, the womb man is a dangerous entity. You have the power of dimensions. Because your stomach, your belly is the entrance to the earth. You are not a normal person. And if God gave you a physical womb, then it means you have a bigger spiritual womb. You can birth things on earth. That's why in any nation, when you want to change civilization, you arrest women. And you use women for your agenda. We are going to pray a prayer today. Listen. And this prayer is that every definition, let me put it this way. When we enter 2022, God said to me, says, fight against definitions. Then not long from that, I saw on the internet how that even gender is being redefined. Then I realized that Satan understands definitions. Christians don't. Because Jesus does not define the body to be dead. He said he is asleep. That means if I define him as dead, I've invoked a force. I will actually need extra power to fight. But he is asleep. So Jesus uses the power of definitions. He calls for bread and he says it will be enough. Whilst the other said, it's not enough. He said, it's enough. Father, we thank you. This is sufficient. Definitions. Can I tell you something? You have defined what a woman should be. And the success of a woman. That is why any extra terrestrial, external activity, you don't want. Because you have your definition. That a woman must grow up, marry, have children, raise them to the potential 
to be good citizens and die. It's not true. It's absolutely not true. Because you see, Satan has imbibed that technology and introduced it on two entities, Mystery Babylon and Jezebel. He has increased their technology. Jezebel means without cohabitation. When Jezebel appears, there's no tolerance of a rival. That's God. Jehovah, Hannah. Exodus 34, I am jealous. But Jezebel stole that technology from, he from heaven when the angels came. And she's using it to propagate. Look at this. Jezebel housed the prophets of Baal. She fed them. And aside that, Deborah was a wife to Lepidoff. Do you know, we think Jezebel had a bad marriage. There's no record to that. Jezebel was actually a perfect wife. She came to Ahab. I see you want this land. Naboth's garden. He said, yes. He said, sir, your wish is my command. Even in witchcraft, she didn't overrule her husband. She went to collect Naboth's farm, kill Naboth, and said, Hubby, it's yours. And Ahab said, What happened? He said, You don't want to know. Go. He said, I don't want to tell the guest. You wanted the, the garden. Abi said, Yes, go. And he went. And that's how Ahab was excited. He said, Sweetheart, you're good. Thank you. Thank you. That's the power of Jezebel. In as much as she's highly powerful and highly demonic, she knows what God has graced there in to steward the power she has. Then why would Deborah, who has the Holy Ghost and the spirit of meekness, be anointed yet dishonorable to her spouse? There's something wrong. So we are going to pray. There's a powerful woman. They didn't need to preach to Solomon. They just had to marry him to wives. He will change his God. A woman can change your God. A woman can change your God quickly than you know. Yeah. If she pressures you that there's no money, mama will become your God. You will worship money as fast as you can. You will be shocked. At the same time too, if she encourages you, God will be your God. I give you this scenario so you understand that without the Holy Ghost, the mantle of Deborah can be corrupted into witchcraft, of domineering, of controlling. But there's a realm. There's a realm. When you know the power you carry. Jesus' mother told him, it's not time. Every time Jesus wants to do a miracle, it's not time. Every time Jesus wants to do a miracle, it's not time. So the day in John chapter 2, when they went to the wedding, the people, he said, go and tell him and ask him what you have to do. Then, the man of Jesus said, son, please turn the water to wine. And Jesus answered her by the things she has been telling him from childhood. Woman, it's not time. He said, no, now it's time. Now it's time. Because ask yourself, why did he say it's not time but still did a miracle? It was actually a family, mother, son kind of. Ma, it's not time. He said, no, now it's time. You've been saying it's not time. He said, no, this is the time. Because God said this is it. What the angel told me, he said, in your 30th at the wedding. So it's time. This beginning of Jesus, miracles in Cana of Galilee, when he turned water to wine and showed forth his glory. So it means Mary was in synchrony with heaven, that that was the day the glory of God be seen. A mother. Oh, I'll say something to worry men. But at least if you're a woman, pray for your husband to see it. A mother has the revelation of the child. So women name children. Forget tradition. Women name children. It was Rebecca that heard there are two nations in your belly, not Isaac. An angel appeared to Manoah's wife, not Manoah. When Manuel came for it, he said, an angel came to night, this night. And this one, he said, you don't believe it's okay. I've told him to come again. Elizabeth heard the name of John before Zachariah heard it. Mary heard the instruction before Joseph. Show me in the Bible. 
the only time in fact Leah Gad Asha Naphtali she was naming children and Jacob never interrupted until amongst all the 12 children one was named out of pain and a curse so he said he will not be Benoni he will be Benjamin so women named children because only you understand at three months what the baby did in your belly when they heard the prophet's voice only you understand when the baby was churning but you see please don't go by tradition go by what I'm saying so you understand that is in the Bible but I end finally with this before Deborah was a man called Ehud in Judges chapter 3 the Bible says Ehud was a military guy that was left handed whose father was Gerah that lived in Bethlehem and was actually left handed Judges 20 verse 6 to 16 says the tribe of Benjamin they were able to 700 soldiers they were left handed who were able to sling a sling and not miss by his breath the 16 of Judges 20 they were called Benjamin but they were left handed do you know what that means listen to this when Rahel cursed her son and was dying the Bible says that in that case Jacob changed the name and said he shall not be called Benoni son of my sorrow he shall be called Benjamin son of my right hand so the entire tribe of Benjamin their name means sons of the right hand but they were left handed how can your tribe name be right handed men but all of you are left handed there is no tribe in Israel that was ever recorded as left handed except Benjamin why would it would be told he is a mighty general mighty in battle but he is left handed and from Benjamin so the Hebrew says he is left handed from right handed you know what he's trying to tell you the power of Deborah as all mantles are are not the powers that invoke natural abilities Ehud was left handed but he comes from a tribe who was supposed to be the power of right hand that means that their power was not in their physical left or right handedness it was in the supernatural imposition of being right handed something was not muscular the reason we think something is muscular is because of Hollywood but if something was muscular it would not be a surprise that he can kill and do the things he did but it was the spirit of the Lord that came upon a scrawny man mightily for him to do what he did that tells me emphatically from Gideon to Barak Shanga had an ox gold and at one battle killed 600 men these men were not people operating with natural ability the mantle of Deborah is irrespective of your master's degree the mantle of Deborah will not consult your CV if you think this thing is about your natural pedigree Paul said ye you know your calling not many wise not many noble not many of good report but some who were of no reputation some who were of no class God called us and chose us first Corinthians 1 26 so he's saying to you that God's calling is not because you are good-looking he's not going to give you a mantle of Deborah because you are eloquent he's not going to give it because you are you have a beautiful stature you can be scrawny you can be little but because it's coming by the power of the Holy Ghost to mantle you it to swallow weakness and expose God in fact let me say it in ending he prefers weakness so that power will be revealed that's why any aspect of your life you are still strong you have not yet seen his power because you know what to do he's waiting till the day you get weak there This morning, it comes by desire. Through desire, man shall separate himself. If you desire it, it will happen. It will happen. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
I see the angels of God here. Angels have no gender, but they take form for representation. So some angels are children. Forbid them, for their angels see my father's face every day. There are some angels that God allowed to mimic growth with you. But it doesn't mean they grow. There are some angels when you see them, they're muscular. Others are in military uniform. But they are beyond that expression. So I see angels that have the appearance of what Zachariah said. They look like women. And there's something they're about to do. What God's original definition of woman is, is actually the picture of the church. In the church is power. In the church is anointing. The church is the feminine of Christ. Just as the wife is the feminine of her husband. That means that if you want to see the picture of a woman who is mantled, it is a woman who is betrothed to her lover. And that speaks of the church in its glory. The church teaches principalities. The woman teaches principalities. The many-sided wisdom of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The river of God is flowing here. I see palm trees all over this place. I see roots being pulled out of the ground. Ashes, please position yourself. Just position yourself. And approaching might come with lightness, might come with feeling like your legs want to give on you, but don't worry, it's just approaching. God is approaching things that have inhibited the flow of the Holy Ghost. Precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, brood on me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, live in me, and my eyes will see your glory, and my spirit will soar on high. Holy Spirit. I see an uprooting going on right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, brood on me. All the hurt in my spirit, take away today. Holy Spirit, brood on me. Let my eyes see you. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see you, they shall see you. There are four of you here. 
roots are coming out of your legs. I'm, I'm literally seeing you're going to feel it around your legs. And you are feeling light, like you are levitating in the spirit. You are, I see you just, I see the Holy Ghost just lift you into the clouds of glory. Right now, right now. Look at that. Ushers, please help them. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Oh, I, 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 I. Too many excuses because something is keeping you rooted. You are like, I'm scared to move. Am I sure God will not disappoint me? The last time I tried God, I lost a lot of people. Holy Spirit, brood on me. Koba Safara. Let me soar with you in heaven. I see you day and day and night. Oh, liar, me, 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 no, 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 I see the clouds. Boro tali branteba. Honey, it's all over you. That's it. That's it. That's it. All the vibrations is all over you. Holy Spirit, rule on me. Koba shata. Let my eyes see your glory. Oh, I, 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 I. Holy Spirit, show me light. Let my spirit receive your glory. Oh, I, 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 I. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Oh, oh, o
saw a group of women. Their eyes were as flint. Fire was in it. And I looked and God said, look at this one. Psalm 68 prophesied them. The Lord gave the word. And many were the company of women. The Hebrew says, many were the army of women that published it. They didn't speak it alone. The document was written on them. Their nature, their choices was the message of the Messiah. Like Magdalene that was at the tomb of Jesus and saw him and said, Rabbi, Rabboni, Rabboni. Hello, Fafatalika voices. Just everywhere be quiet. Now see, I'm going to describe something. Just everywhere be quiet. I'm going to describe something that we just move into the next phase. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I saw these women and their feet had thunder in it. And I saw they were in breastplates. Their height looked like basketball women, women that play basketball. And I saw them as they walked. They went into dry regions and waters began to come out of the earth. And I saw them. They will fetch the sand in the desert. And when they sprinkle it, it becomes a forest. And God told me, one of the things that characterizes with these women is that they have a background of strong witchcraft. Their families have dealt with the occult before. They have touched shrines before. Ushers, please watch it. There's something come to take people. And it's going to arrest them. Because some of them don't even know what they are dealing with. It's like a rope. They'll begin to spin. Watch it. Please watch it. People will begin to run and spin all around. I see chariots in this place. I see chariots in this place. I see chariots in this place. It will be an aggressive operation. Because God is turning it around. God is turning it around. The devil tried to destroy the plan of God by exposing your family to idolatry. But hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. He is breaking that chain. You are breaking from the curse. You, are, you will be free to serve God. You will be free to prophesy. No more nightmares. No more nightmares. No more nightmares. Kofostava, blimon brintal koboske, palastemo fisteche, guske lemiha. All your comportment to be thrown away. The Holy Ghost takes over. Hora sampe convenis. Lord, 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 Lord. Who are these mighty women? They fear no war. They fear no war. This man, Lord. There are three of you. You have been avoiding war. You said you are tired. You are fought. You are tired. You are done fighting. You are three. 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 Watch us. Watch it. Three people. They have been saying they are tired. Catch them. Catch them. Catch that one. Oh, God. There are three of them. They said we are tired. We are fought and fought and fought. I don't want to fight again. Whatever happens, you happen. God is giving you energy. God is telling you you are not done yet. You are like Eliezer. The sword will not fall out of your hand. It will be stuck to your hand. Even when you want to run away, the sword will be in your hand. It will cleave to your hand. It will so the agenda of God is complete. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Oh Lord. Lem dem bon dan des getrend of en tempelu kofa. Palar has in their folk to scare. Lementus gave There's a person I'm seeing. It's like a letter A begins one of your names. A and something. And I saw it's like a proposal you are so believing God for to go through. And you've met so many doors that said we can't help you. Some even said you need to compromise and let's see how we can help you. I saw the Lord placing an iron armor on you right now. 
is an armor of recognition. It will be very heavy. Very heavy. You will feel heavy. Your hand, it will feel heavy. Your legs will be extra heavy. Your hands will be extra heavy. It's, God is coming to rest on you like Joseph. Even if they're forgetting you. They are, look, because that, 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 that proposal has to do with a lot of humanitarian things in society. But some people just aren't interested. It's coming, or listen, it's going to rest. I know what I'm, I'm seeing. It will, it will mantle you. It will mantle you. The crown of your head, it will feel like your head is feeling like it's exploding. Pressure. And you are wearing a heavy armor all of a sudden. So you are feeling like there is heat and you are sweating. Lord, 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 Lord. Let it rest upon you. Let it rest. Let it rest. Let it rest right now. So you know this thing is about God and not about a good desire. And the reason it's not working is because the devil is afraid if it happens, he's going to lose a mighty, mighty battle. It's resting upon you now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And finally, the poured anointings on this place. And immediately I saw in the spirit the images of great generals that have once lived here. Foremost of it was Catherine Kuhlman. A white draping dress, red hair, scrawny frame. And she's speaking. And they said there are mantles on earth we didn't carry to heaven. They are still here. And he said, why are you running from the Holy Spirit? He made me. He made me powerful. He said, you want to be a prophetess? That's different. Nice. But the Holy Ghost is the only difference. The person is receiving a strange mantle. When you move, there will be an electromagnetic force that will be around you. It will be like electricity. People cannot explain it. But as soon as you stand by people, they feel apprehensive. Like their heart will begin to beat extra fast. It's an anointing. It's an anointing. It's an anointing. It's, it's to the east and to the west. Right here. There's a mantle. Just as Elijah's mantle had copyright. I'm seeing the mantle of Catherine Coleman. This is the last thing I'm saying. It's a mantle of Catherine Coleman. It's coming. It's coming. Lord, 